Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This week I did the one week sketchbook challenge. I saw a few people doing this and I thought it would be really fun. I had one of these small moleskin sketchbooks lying around and so I started this last Monday and finished it yesterday which was Sunday. I decided to make this one dinosaur themed. I've spent a lot of time learning about and researching dinosaurs and how to draw them, everything about their anatomy, their behavior, keeping up to date with fossil finds and stuff like that. So there's something that I've put a lot of energy into. I really love them. I'm certainly still learning, um, but this sketchbook was a really nice brush up and time to practice. So let's get started. One week sketchbook challenge. So I started off with just a drawing of a Truodon. Um, I did this one in pen, pencil, and gouache, a whole mix of stuff. I wanted to make this sketchbook sort of colorful and try a few different things in it too. So this page here had a base of gray gouache and I was just doing a study of the neck muscles of a Truodon here. This skull I painted from a reference photo I took at the Museum of the Rockies in Montana. This is an adult Triceratops skull. And this is a juvenile Triceratops that I based off of a specimen from the Museum of the Rockies as well. They have a really cool exhibit there with different growth stages of Triceratops and Tyrannosaurus rex. And it's a really cool addition to their collection. Here is a muscle study of a Hypsilophodon. Um, pretty much all dinosaurs have the same muscle structure, and that muscle structure is also the same as any tetrapod animal, anything that walks on land. So it's pretty easy to apply this musculature to any other creature you might design or any other dinosaur. And I just chose Hypsilophodon because it's like a fairly simple dinosaur. He's not overly muscular in any place, so it was a good basic animal to just brush up on my anatomy with. Here I just felt like doing some um, illustrated type, some hand-drawn lettering and stuff, so I did that, and then on this page is a little pen sketch of a, a critter and some Cretaceous plants. So for the next few pages here, I tried something that I haven't done normally. I used acrylic gouache, which to me is not much of a gouache aside from being opaque and matte. It's more of an acrylic, but I used it for the base of my drawings here. I painted it in and then drew over top. And then I used some Prismacolor alcohol markers and they made this really neat um, alcohol type patterning when they dried down on the acrylic gouache, which I thought was kind of cool. You can see it better on this drawing of a Velociraptor. Um, the alcohol markers dry more around the edges like watercolor do, but only when you use them on this acrylic gouache ground or on something like Yupo or marker paper. The acrylic gouache also kept the markers from going through the paper, which was nice to find out. The drawing of Mei Long. It's kind of a very classic Mei Long drawing. Everybody's done this drawing. Just a sketch that I filled in with some watercolor. And this Edmontosaurus skull I painted with acrylic wash. I don't have a lot of tubes of acrylic wash and I don't like it that much um, for a number of reasons, but I tried it out here to see if I was feeling better about it or not. This is just a bird's eye view of a sauropelta, so a type of nodosaur, and it's kind of more abstract. I colored that with watercolor. And then just some studies of a pachyrhinosaurus. I have a lot of dinosaur toys and figurines. These help me to practice drawing them when I don't feel like making them up too much. 
and also to practice drawing them from different angles that are hard to visualize in my head. So I have a ton of dinosaur toys. And I keep these in my desk and in a bucket and also at my studio as well. So here's just a drawing of a ceratopsian body. Didn't feel like drawing the head. You can do whatever you want. Here's a diplodocus skull. And then a little watercolor drawing of a diplodocus as well. And then here I was thinking about Brachiosaurus. And sauropods are very strange animals, but they're related to theropod dinosaurs. So T-Rex and uh, dromaeosaurs and stuff like that. So I did a skull study of two side by side. Here's a Brachiosaurus and a dromaeosaurus. And the skulls are actually quite similar if you think about it. Here I've labeled all of the parts of the skull and all the fenestra. And these skulls look definitely more like theropod skulls than they do like any other skulls like ceratopsians and hadrosaurs. Um, and the best way to figure stuff like that out is to just draw it yourself. Some people might have told you already, you might already know it, but drawing is really great practice and sometimes you just need to draw plain old skulls, I find labeling really helps as well. It gives you a sense that you actually learned something. So on the last day of my sketchbook, I went to the Royal Terrell Museum of Paleontology, which I live quite near. It's about an hour and a half drive away, but it's one of the best dinosaur museums in the world and I'm super lucky to be so close to it. So I did a lot of drawings there. This is a Stegoceras, which is a little um, Pachycephalosaurus. There's a sketch of an Ornithomimus skeleton. This is Black Beauty, a large um, Tyrannosaur, and her skull is actually, it's black because of the minerals that created the fossil, so it's a really gorgeous, gorgeous fossil. This is actually the original with some cast parts added on as well. couple pages about Corythosaurus, a hadrosaur dinosaur. I love hadrosaurs. I did a project about them in school for my senior project. And at the Trail Museum, they have a brand new specimen, a notosaur, um, which is incredibly well preserved. And they even ran an article about it in National Geographic. So it's really awesome to be able to see this guy in real life because the fossil is incredible. Here's a Hippacrosaurus, and just a sketch here. And I liked doing these little little ribbons. I thought it added some interest to the to the drawings. And here's just a classic old Triceratops. I used some toned paper that I stuck in the sketchbook for the last few pages. I was getting a little bit sick of drawing on the plain, thin moleskin sketchbook paper. This is a Psittacosaurus which is a really cool little dude. I love the fossil that they have. It's just, it's tough to draw because it's in a glass case. So I had to stand at a very odd angle. And here's just a Triceratops reconstruction that I doodled. I was still at the museum while I drew this. Um, so inspired by the stuff around me, but I wasn't observing any of the mounts or anything like that. And this Ornitholestes here, I actually based on one of the mounts at the museum. So I drew the skeleton um, really loosely underneath and then filled it in with what I think he might look like with some dino feathers and a little nose bump. So that's the last page I did. I really liked this challenge. I thought it was really fun. I actually went out and bought more of these tiny sketchbooks so that I can do a few more in the future, maybe about different animal groups. So if you liked this video, let me know, give it a like, a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, because I'm going to do more of these and show you more sketches from Drumheller where the Dinosaur Museum is, and also do some more little challenges like this. If you know of any good challenges, let me know in the comments below. I'd be really curious to see what's out there. Thanks for watching, and have a great day. Bye!